Today, I'm going to be sitting down with a very good friend of mine and fellow podcaster, Edwin Frondozo, talking about 100xing your life. My name is Catherine Tanaka. I'm a fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach and the host and producer host and producer of this podcast, The Body Project Podcast. And we're going to be talking about 100xing your life. And the reason why we're talking about that is that if you are not familiar with this, my signature program is called The 100 Day Protocol. This is a 100 day program where I support busy working women that often are moms between the ages of 35 and 55 to completely transform their life. And we use the context of 100 days to give them access to exactly this. How do they shift how they show up in their nutrition? How do they shift how they show up in their fitness? And how do they, from a mindset perspective, completely transform who they are before the program to somebody completely unrecognizable to who that was when they complete the 100 days? And so this program was actually born out of my 28 day program. So about eight years ago, I used to take clients through a month, kind of a boot camp of shifting and up leveling their fitness, nutrition, and life. Right. And the 28 days was intentional to really just get people leveling up. Right. I used to run boot camp classes out of a athletic facility close by to my home. I used to run private clients out of my fitness studio and my clients would be with me for a long time. Right. So every quarter we would inject this 28 day protocol, a little bit of a challenge to level up how they are in the nutrition to, you know, reset how they are doing in fitness to just all the way incrementally, incrementally build on the last skill focus, goal, so that they continuously advance. What I found was that the 100 day, I mean, the 28 day was amazing. People were like in it to win it, focus 28 days, balls to walls, and then they would fall off, right? They would not be able to take the principles and the practices long term right? We all know that we can do anything for two to four weeks. And especially in the fitness industry, in the diet industry, people are like, yes, I'm going to cut out the sugar, cut out the ice cream, cut out the alcohol for three weeks and they can do it, right? Without too much trouble. What I have learned over the last 20 years of doing this, and especially in the last decade, I would say, of doing this and really supporting people in up-leveling their behaviors and their lives, is that it's not about quick fixes. It's about mastery. I am now 41 years old at the time of this recording. And what worked for me when I was 20 years old, when I was competing in fitness, when I was single no longer works for me in the body of a 41-year-old with my hormones the way it is, with my busy life, managing multiple businesses, managing two kids, you know, trying to be the best version of myself in my life. It doesn't work. And so I transformed this program actually in the midst of COVID two years ago, or I guess a year and a half ago, where we took the 28 days, those principles, and we went deeper. We expanded and we created, I created, we me, myself, and I, the team of me, myself, and I created the 100 day protocol. This is the 100 day of transformation mastery, really. And so we're going to talk about that today. So, Edwin Frondozo is a dear friend of mine. He's a fellow podcaster, the founder of the, um, the Business Leadership Podcast. Acronyms always screw me up. So I was thinking about the acronym and I can always never match the two. The Business Leadership Podcast, who has won, you know, nationally recognized awards for his podcast and the conversation he has with, you know, some tech founders, CTOs, CEOs, uh, really talking about what does it take for business leadership? And in the realm of fitness, as I've grown through the industry over 22 years, my perception of fitness is very different now. Fitness for me is just the access point of mastering your whole life, the gateway to greatness, right? Fitness fundamentally is this really physical practice, something we can connect with physically, right? With lifting weights, with sweating, getting on a cardio machine, whatever it is that you like doing for your fitness. There is this physical, tangible means of interacting with yourself, of practicing focus, 
practicing dip discipline of showing up even when you don't want to, of doing the thing even when there's excuses, of really rising to the occasion higher than yourself, right? And so Edwin took on probably about this time last year, 100xing his business right? 100xing his business and also his life. And so I invited him on the podcast today to really have this conversation of how do we 100x our lives? How do we 100x our businesses? Because they say it takes 66 days to create a habit, right? They used to believe it was 21 days that has been debunked, that it actually takes a little bit longer. But 100 days, so what he calls a 100-day epic, Xing 100 day X, right? Is how do we quantifiably create those habits that layer upon itself, like I speak about often in my program, to create mastery in your life so that over 100 days you can really actually shift, right? If you take the context of a year, oftentimes, right, it is difficult to actually hit the runway, actually hit the goal after the 365 days. But when you break it down into quarters, when you break it down into 100 days, when you actually create taking the habits and layering them on itself, you actually make a shift. So I'm going to welcome Edwin into the conversation. I'm excited for you to hear everything he has to say. I do this for everyone I go on, except when they're on this this other new platform that I fire is something dot FM. What platform is that? I'll tell you later. I don't know. Okay. All right. We are going live. Edwin Frondozo. We're going to go live inside Facebook. And then we are going to later put this inside the body project podcast. Thank you, my friend, for joining me today. I am so excited you're here. Edwin Frondozo, fellow entrepreneur, fellow parent, fellow podcaster, the host and producer of the Business Leadership Podcast, and the founder of Cafe 100X, which is what we are going to talk about today. Welcome, my friend. Catherine, thank you for having me. Finally get to be on a Zoom call, talking to you rather than working out and following your lead. Yes. Which, which um, amazing, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I kind of I kind of wimped out these last couple of weeks, but don't hate me. No, you're doing good. So Edwin <laughs> is a very good friend of mine. And we are sitting down today talking about his newest venture, Cafe 100X. He recently declared in the last, I guess it's been about a year now, Edwin, his declaration of 100Xing his business his life and everything around it. And so the reason why I'm having him on today, the podcast and on this live is really, so the context is that if you don't know, I run a transformation online program where I take busy working women that often are moms between the ages of 35 and 55 through a hundred day transformation, fitness, nutrition, and predominantly mindset. And I love the context of a hundred days because it really allows mastery. It really allows getting deeper into the habits that really last a long time in our lives. And so I wanted Edwin on because it really is about how do we quantifiably make a difference in our goals, in our lives that make a huge difference. So Edwin, tell us a little bit about who you are in the world. And then I want to hear about the 100 day or 100x. Catherine, thank you again. Um, who am I in the world? I, I, um, I am a five-year-old father, seven-year-old husband, 16-year-old um, entrepreneur, 45-year-old son. That's who I am in this world. I guess I'm a 45 year old brother as well. <laughs> um, I'm not going to get to how old now, uncle I am, but that that's getting too crazy. Um, I am a I'm a co-founder um, and CEO of a tech company called Slingshot VoIP, also award winning podcaster of the Business Leadership Podcast. Almost five years that I've been doing podcasts like yourself, Catherine, and um, talking about Cafe 100X. Um, we'll get to that, I guess. And your question was how I got to the 100X or the declaring the audacious goal, which was exactly 310 days ago, which was September 22nd. I did the audacious thing to publicly declare I would 100X my tech business in mm. Slingshot VoIP in 100 days. And I guess what had happened in the story, Catherine, 
to this was going into 2020, I was questioning a lot of my decisions, my purpose, what I want to do with my life. At the time, I was already somehow, by the act of God or the universe, I was surrounded by impact entrepreneurs, heart-centered entrepreneurs. I'm a tech entrepreneur. I'm an engineer. I've spent most of my life in, on, in tech world, around engineers. But now I'm, you know, I found myself around many people who are making impact, one, one person at a time, depending on what it was. And I started questioning what I was doing because Slingshot was a, is a bootstrap business. We built it from the ground up hmm. and it was taking long to do. It's a telecommunications business and it's a, um, a comp- every, every industry is competitive, but my competitors, the large competitors are the giants. You know, they're the Bells, the Rogers, the at and hmm. Verizon's, you know, people who are yeah. spending billion dollars of just to keep top of mind. Right. So it was, it was, it was tough. So I was questioning like, oh man, what am I going to do with my life? Maybe, you know, I was questioning exiting my business, walking away, yep. starting uh, and starting and to start a public speaking business, right? I like, oh, that. you know, I want to, I want to <laughs> speak. I want to create this thing. And I ended up hiring a consultant, a speaking coach. And we did through the whole discovery of who Edwin was and create a brand called Flashpoint because the person was like, Edwin, you know who you are. You may not believe it, but what you do is you, you have this understanding and, and what you could do is spark. You could create this Flashpoint. And, you know, also at the same time with the tech business, we were introduced to someone through my network who came from a competitor and wanted to join our company as a partner, who has the ability and the experience of growing and scaling the sales organization. So, you know, we took a couple of months before we brought them in and we had a plan, you know, going to 2020, this is what we're going to do. Here's our business plan. We're going to invest here, blah, blah, blah. And then COVID hit. So everything stopped on slingshot. And then again, I was just like, and not only me, but the whole world, Catherine was, yeah. was wondering what the hell is going on. Mm-hmm. And if you're in the entrepreneurship space and maybe not even specific to entrepreneur, if you were someone who liked to help, a big word at the time was pivoting. Yep. I got to pivot. I can't sit here. I got to do positive for the world. It's so yes. negative. Um, so I, I got into this circle of pivoting as well. And, um, you know, I ended up doing a partnership with a national organization, doing a, a, a mini series about the virtual shift, talking to all the leaders of how they were shifting through this, navigating through, through COVID and how we were leading and how we were managing so that was fun that ended i ended up getting involved with a tech startup with around another buzzword which was flattening the curve yes and that was exciting that was super exciting i felt alive you know slingshot was still on the back burner we were helping just some of our customers but not we weren't gaining any customers at the time so that was exciting we 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 were growing fast and we were getting partnerships and grants all around the world and as fast as it grew it imploded so all these like pivots that I went through, Catherine, mm. it always got me, you know, when they ended, it got me either depressed or wondering again, like, what, what's my purpose? What am I doing? What am I going to do with Slingshot? Um, so luckily for me at this time, I was all, I also, because it was the great reset, right, Catherine? Yes. I was I also that. took the chance to um, do some self-work, some deep work with a good friend of ours together. I think uh, you and I, we worked with our good friend, Kira. Shout out to Kira Day. Founder Founder of the Passion Center. Founder of the Passion Center, um, which was very eye-opening to me because it allowed me to understand some who I am and why I like doing things. One thing that gravitated to me, Catherine, is that I love doing many things right? I, if anyone knows me, I always have a number of things going on Mm -hmm. and people always recognize how I'm able to balance a lot of these things, you know? And, um, it was always a challenge because when I was growing up, um, high school, grade school, you know, the feedback my parents always got was like, Oh, Edwin's bored. (laughs) You know, 
I did nothing, dude. I did nothing. I literally did nothing. I hung out with everyone. I hung out with the sports. I hung out with the, uh, I hang out with the chess clubs. I hang out with the guys smoking weed in the parking lot. I hang out, you know, I'm smoking cigarettes. Um, but I did nothing and I always passed, right? Hmm. Until I got, until I decided to go to engineering. So university, I went to engineering. Now I'm taking six courses, all difficult, 30 hours of classes, including, you know, 16 hours of lab time, plus having a social life and a girlfriend that lived in Toronto. And I aced university, A+. plus. So I was doing, I was able to juggle yeah. six things plus social. Um, I didn't realize I was good at time management. So this is, this is, this is something that I innately understood when I was challenged. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this. Right. But then you, you leave, you leave university and now you're, you're in a job. One thing. Yes. Now, here we go again, bored, doing nothing. Right. Um, luckily for me, I was working for a international company called Nortel networks long story there, but it's telecommunications. So that's the history of how I got into telecom. Mm. And um, I got laid off and I went into spirals of different jobs until I went to entrepreneurship. But even in the entrepreneur, so here's the funny thing, Catherine, and you could probably relate to this. I was last year, I was, when I was doing this work with Kira, I was looking at my daughter, Jade, and she's four years old. And four-year-old child are very curious. Yes. And as parents, as elders, as guidance, we empower them to, you know, you're interested in that this minute. Yeah, go do that. I'll help you. 10 minutes later, you're interested in that. Okay, go ahead and do that. We don't care. We'll just, we'll empower them. We'll, we'll support them until I don't know when it changes, but then we're like, oh, you gotta, you gotta study something. You gotta focus. You gotta focus on something. Mm. Don't do that. Do this. It's not going to be worthwhile. And you know, for me, someone who likes doing many things, I realized how do we, how do we as a society get our children not to kill their curiosity, right? Right. And then as an entrepreneur, you're like, oh no, I'm the boss. I could do anything I want. Yep. And this but, really is the inception of the 100X because it really allows you, instead of constantly pivoting, 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 to focus. Yeah. So just, just to end that point to the, to the focus. So I started understanding working with Kira that this is who I am. I love, I'm a polymath. I'm a multi-passionate. I like to do, I strive when I have multiple things. Right. But I was also in this place last summer where it's like all these pivots was me trying to partner with someone who would complete me or a business or do this where people like yourself would tell me, Edwin, no, you got it wrong. These people want to work with you. You're the one that completes them. And it all started changing. And I, I started thinking about what to do because I was all empowered of this multi-passion. This is who I am. I started mind mapping exactly what I was going to build with Kira. I don't know if you remember. (laughs) And, uh, and then I, and then I had a meeting with a friend of ours in Kensington, Kevin, who inspired me with his audacious goal. He's like, Oh, Edwin, I'm going to do something in a hundred days. He's like, I was going to make 35 million in a hundred days. I remember that very, very well. I was like, Holy crap. Um, that's interesting. You're nuts. Tell me more. (laughs) So, you know, we started talking about success, you know, success is not success is actually not, is not linear, right? Success is actually, we're, we're on plateaus all the time. And then all of a sudden we just, we shoot up and then you're on another plateau and you shoot up. Like if we talk about the NBA, you're, you're an NCAA player making nothing, get drafted, which is a draft is tomorrow, get 3 million. There's no like zero, like this, the 3 million. Nice. You get zero, three million. And if you're a superstar, you go from three million to 30 million. Yep. There's no like zero to three to 30. It's, 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 it's interesting. So, so the whole concept and the whole hundred days, which I was buying into was that you're right. You know, these, these jumps happen instantaneously, but you have to do the work. You have to focus and you got to do things. Mm. Now, Kevin challenged me. He's like, Edwin, you do all these things but you need to focus. <laughs> so he's like, I'm like, I just finished this whole three months of Kira. Like, Oh no, you got to do many things. And what's interesting with society and us growing and children is we tell everyone to focus, 
And me being empowered entrepreneur, I realize entrepreneurs think the same thing too. Entrepreneurs like, no, you can't do everything. You actually have to niche. You have to do something to be someone. And I'm just like, oh, I just, I don't believe this all, but I was intrigued by the, this, this challenge, right? Mm. Um, this challenge of, 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 of making big or audacious goals with a hundred days. Um, so yeah, September 22nd, I made this audacious goal that I would hundred X my tech business and slingshot whip. And the reason why I did hundred X is when I looked in my vision board and the cost of my dreams and what it took for slingshot to pay me specifically, let's say a salary, it was around 98 times where it was today or on September 22nd. So that's where the hundred X came from. And so that day came and I did this video. I announced it to our small mastermind and I, um, and I posted it and almost instantly, Catherine, something changed with me. Hmm. Um, things started manifesting, conversations started happening. I started moving and not to say I, I wasn't moving or fast before, but I was moving more intently with more purpose. Like in your, in your line of work, it's like, yeah, you could do reps all day, but if you're doing it fast or doing it wrong, like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're not doing anything. You're actually just burning your own energy and, 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 and hoping for something correct. So I was moving more intently and things started happening. And uh, that 100 days was, was, um, was the start. I started doing like daily video blogs and doing those things. But um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't need to, I, I don't want to keep babbling. I, I, I want to make sure you had a chat or if anyone was, was asking questions. Yeah. So I, I love that. Edwin. Thank you for sharing the inception of that. And, you know, for me, it's been really special to watch you, right? Like I remember that declaration, like it was yesterday. I remember Kevin Dabrowski, our amazing friend sharing his declaration. And one of the things that I love about you, Edwin, is although you're a polymath and you are a master so many things, your commitment to this 100 day X is unwavering. Talk about focus, right? You are in it to win it. In fact, not only did you go through one whole cycle of 100 days, right? You have now completed almost three hundred days you've, and we're going to speak about this more on the next episode, but you are now using this as your signature focus to really take corporations through, to take entrepreneurs through, to take individuals through of how do you find focus and mastery, even if you are a polymath, even if you have many jug uh, balls juggled in the air. Right. And I want to just bring focus to two things that you said, the deep work that you did, right. Because as entrepreneurs, we are shiny object. We are go, go, go. And oftentimes, even though there is a very large conversation around doing the deep work, self-reflection, going inside before we go outside, oftentimes it's fleeting because we are literally managing so many things at once, right? I would love for you to share a little bit about that because one of the things that I've been able to witness over the last three years of knowing you is that you take the time to go inwards. You take the time to listen and observe that really allows you to manifest this unbelievable life you have. So I would love for you to speak a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, and if we're talking about taking time, I do have in this, this journey and this discipline of self work, it's a practice. I mean, this is everything from working out. Like you can't, you can't go to the gym for 30 days and then stop mm -hmm. and then hope 30 days later, you're still fit, right? Like you got to get back and relearn and get that muscle memory back. I mean, I, I ran, I missed running for a week because I went camping and like yesterday I was just like, you know, it took me 20 minutes before the lungs remembered what the heck it was doing again. Right. So the practice I have is pretty regimen for the most part, but I, you know, I wake up, I do my, I do my meditation, my prayers, um, and then I do, which a lot of it is partly um, getting things out. I, I, I also are pretty regimen in my journaling. I do my miracle morning, no, my morning pages, which is basically three pages full. You know, it's been a challenge with COVID, Catherine, and I think I've shared this with you, but, you know, some days I'll get one page, some days I'll get three. It, it all depends when my daughter wakes up. 
Um, but these times for me, it's so refreshing in the sense that anything that I have on mind, anxiety, excitement, things that are coming in mind, you know, I get it to paper, I get it out of my head, I put it to paper, and, and it works. And it gets you free. Um, and then your subconscious starts working on it. What happened during the 100 days, one thing I added to it was doing these day, daily video blogs. So my first round to it, I did it every day, five to 10 minutes. I just said what it was, you know, and I would start with, hey, today is day, th you know, day three of Edwin. I'm going to 100x my business. Um, this is what I did. Here's what's on my mind. And this was like, uh, first, I have a practice of silence. So, you know, and then I have a practice of scribing and then I have a practice of speaking, speaking it out. Oh. So now it's like triple threat. And what I realized during my first hundred days is as I spoke this out, I was not only getting things and thoughts out of my mind, but I was also doing affirmations and positive um, self-talk mm -hmm. because I was saying, I'm going to hundred X my business in a hundred days. So what happened in my 100 days, Catherine, and I don't know if I shared th this to you specifically, but, you know, within the first 100 days, I don't know exactly because I have all these videos, but I know if I watch them all, I'll know the exact day, but or the time frame, but that belief I went to that belief that fear that belief that had me get over the fear to declare it became the conviction and it was around the 70 day mark, mm. where I was like, you know what? I am a hundred X. I am going to do this. Whether it happens within this hundred days, it's going to happen. Like I am convinced it, I'm doing it. You know, I, I don't know if I told you this to either. I, I questioned myself one time. I'm like, who the hell records a daily digital diary saying they're going to hundred X their business. And it, literally in one of my journals, I said, the guy that's going to hundred X, it is obviously going to do this. No one else is going to say this every day. There's no way that you have the conviction, unless you're crazy, which you need a little bit not so to be. But I was like, I am doing the actions. I'm putting it out there for accountability for myself. And I'm doing it for record keeping. And one thing I remember saying to myself, Catherine, I was like, this is amazing for even my daughter to look at in the future, mm -hmm. right? Like, who was Edwin? Yeah. What did he go through? What was the story? You know, it's there. It's the, my journals. No one could read my, I can't even read my own journals. So, <laughs> but that's exactly it, right? The legacy of the hundred X and, you know, to that point, And before you jumped on, I spoke about mastery, right? Everyone, I don't know where this came from, but everyone believed that a habit is built in 21 days. In fact, the research is now saying it takes about 66 days, right? So the 100 day in the context of my program really is allowing people to give themselves enough runway so they don't feel like they're tripping over themselves, that it doesn't feel like it's a do or die in four to five weeks of a 30 day, right? And it gives you the runway to practice the things that, like you said, become conviction, allow you to integrate that in your life. Like you said, day 70, just past 66 days, all of a sudden it's flipped that it no longer is like an everyday, okay, I got to do this. Okay, let's drink the water. Let's do the workout. Let's do the thing that now you're like, I am a hundred X, right? So much so that you have built a movement, a community, you integrate a hundred X into everything that you do. Now that I know you, you are a hundred X. And so I love this listening. And one of the other things you said earlier on was that your intention was there. And so talk to me a little bit about that, because as entrepreneurs, right, when we have a clear intention and a clear vision of where we want to go, that's when things line up. We know this, right? But with the new entrepreneurs listening to this or people new in their business or looking to have an audacious goal like your 100x, what do people know, need to know about the importance of setting an intention like you have? I think it keeps us, first off, having intention and a direction is just like anything in life. Like you could walk, you know, you could say, I want to go somewhere, but if you don't know exactly what it feels like, what it looks like, or you do that, you're going to go in circles. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives us a, a compass. Um, but not only does it build a compass, but it, I think for me personally, it instills this identity or this purpose or this legacy that we're trying to build. Right. And 
for the new entrepreneurs out there, I'm not saying this is easy. I've been, like I said, at the top of the hour, um, I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years. And I literally just figured this out last year. So it's my 15-year journey, overnight success, um, in the sense of finding myself. But if you, if if I if I was open to listening to this and not looking at the money 15, 16 years ago, and maybe I wasn't even mature enough to even understand or think about it, but it's understanding who and what you want to be in 10, 15, 30 years. Like what really helped me, what was very transformational was about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I was on a, I was on a weekend retreat and it was like, write down your 30 year. Who are you in 30 years? I was like, what, 30 years? That's just, what the hell? But then again, when you think about it, I'm 45. What am I looking back at when I'm 75? Mm -hmm. What am I super happy about with what I did with my life? How I affected people? You know, am I... The things that I'm worried about today, will I even think about that in 30? Will I think about that in five years, right? Like what I'm worried about today. Um, but intention allows us to put everything into context and allows us to, when we have those bad days or when we have these, you know, situations that really crush you and you're like, why, why am I doing this? Why did I decide this? I think it helps us get back on track. And this hundred days, these self-fulfilling prophecies that I'm doing, you know, I, it would, you know, there are days where it's bad for me still, but what I'm realizing, Catherine, is that I bounce back a lot faster than I did before this started. Like I would go through bad day, bad week, bad month of anxiety. Like if you ask Betty, my wife, she will know, like I would share with her. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But now it's like something comes bad or a situation happens like I'm sitting so, I feel so confident on who I am and what I'm doing that nothing really like crushes me mm. and I'm able to bounce back. And, and not to say that I'm doing this alone. I have amazing groups and uh, people that I, that support me too, that, that I, that I rely on, um, you know, but I don't expect them to always be there, but it's, it's this outlet um, and it's getting out. It's speaking, it's, it's the three. It's the silence, it's the speaking and it's the describing and the speaking. Like you got to speak it out. I think it's, I think it really gets you out of there. Thank you for sharing that, Edwin. So I love this conversation and we are going to be doing this again next week, really looking at the movement you've created with Cafe 100X, what your audacious declarations have been, where that moved you to in 100 Day X1, 100 Day X2, and 100 Day X3. And you're in the midst of putting together a 100 Day Epic Mastermind that really will support people in being in that in-depth conversation, moving them through how to actually shift their life, not only in their business, but how do they show up for themselves in a way that is vastly different. And like you said, something that will anchor people, leveraging that legacy, allowing that focus and intention to come into place, doing the deep work that really allows the inner work to really mirror the external manifestation of the best life you can live. So I'm grateful for you, Edwin, for joining me today. I'm excited for you to share this amazing mastermind that's coming up. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. You're awesome.